did you do after the baby was born, Corvina? Where is my brother's child? Where is he? Gone. Oh, God, no, please, don't tell me that. The doctor said that, that the baby was fine, that there was nothing wrong with him. Where is Dimitri's son? I don't know. I gave him up. You never give up, do you? You really thought you could just flash your money and make Kendall disappear? I thought I could try. You stay away from her. You understand me? <sighs> Anton, I... I don't want any part of Kendall, and neither would you if you had any sense. I thought the tyrant of Vatsal was dead and buried. But you took over right where Hugo left off. What gives you the right to run my life? Your Who do you think you family asked me to look out for you. I'm a grown man. I don't need a keeper. You will, when Kendall gets through with you. Well, your bribe didn't work, Dimitri. At least not the way you wanted it to. Kendall and I are closer than ever, and you're still here by yourself. I finally understand why your wife dumped you. You were a dictator and a lousy one at that. Eric is much better off without you. Oh, you have the most beautiful hair in the whole wide world. You know that, honey? Grandma says it's just like yours. Oh, it's much prettier. And you just get prettier and prettier and prettier every day. You know that? And smarter, stronger. I am so proud of you. Proud of you too, Mommy. <laughs> and you have grown a lot. An inch and a half. Oh, honey, I don't just mean in inches. I mean, you're so much more grown up. I mean, things that used to bother you, I think you take in your stride now. Um, can we have Eggs Benedict for lunch? Of course we can, honey. We can have anything that you want. You know that I would like nothing better than to just always grant all your wishes, anything you want at all times. But I know you know that life isn't always like that. And sometimes, honey, we have to just accept things that don't seem exactly fair to us. No, Mommy. Please, you can't go to prison. I couldn't stand it if you went to prison. I just can't. Trevor? You talking to me? Do I know you, lady? Yes, that's right. You guys are all friends. Go ahead. Tell him. Go ahead. Take a wild guess. Who is she? Your high school sweetheart? Your third grade teacher? Your second cousin twice removed? You from Come Pine on. Valley? You from Pine Valley? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Well, maybe not from birth, but you spent lots of time there. Uh-uh, uh-uh. You said so. Liar! It is too late to change your story. She's on a first name basis with half the town. Fine. You never let eyes on the place. Then why did you pump me for information about Trevor and his family? What about my family? She wanted a complete profile. Marital status, kids, the works. What is it? What about my family? What do you... Phone call for you, Miss Hart. Strife Digest. They need a phone quote on dysfunctional families in transition. You want to take it or not? Why not? Tell me how the reunion works out. Uh, you and I were getting down to business. What's your name, huh? Where do I know you from? Well, no, no. Hey, you and I, we're gonna talk. <coughs> I got it. I'm the one that punched your ticket here, aren't I? 
Yeah, that's it. Light fingers down at the wall. Maybe I read you your rights, wrote up the paperwork on you. Is that it, huh? No? Then what is it, solicitation? Well, whatever it is, it don't make no never mind. Because you got any cockamamie ideas about payback, you just forget it. My dear man, I promise you revenge is the last thing on my mind. Oh, you got your tongue back, huh? So tell me, where do I know you from? How did we meet? Everybody knows you. You're a celebrity. Oh, come on. Come off it, lady. <laughs> and you're modest, too. Yeah, what's your name? My name is Aurelia Gaspard. So what's an Aurelia Gaspard to me? Well, you're the whole reason I go on living in this dreary place. I mean, you're very interesting. You make my life exciting. It's terribly boring in here. Of course, I've already missed the season in London, and Khan's out of the question, so I've developed a taste for the tabloids. And you cut quite a striking figure in the rags. <laughs> Salt of the earth cop turns lawyer to the stars. Mr. Smith goes to the courtroom. It's not exactly Edith Wharton, but it makes for pretty interesting reading. So you're saying it's just a simple, common human interest story, huh? Is that it? So what are you grilling Kendall about my family for? Really? That's a very colorful statement. Unfortunately, it's not true. I was just practicing the art of conversation, but your friend Kendall, she exaggerates shamelessly. <laughs> she does her best work on the stand. Uh, she's a couple of eggs short of a souffle. <laughs> you don't think she's dangerous, do you? She's a couple of eggs short of a souffle? <laughs> it's a shame. You can't trust anybody these days. Mm. I'm in love with Kendall, and you know that. But still, it was worth a million dollars to you to make her vanish. Did you ever, for five seconds, stop to think how I'd feel? Better than you're going to feel six months from now if you don't get her out of your system. Were you going to tell me about the payoff? Were you going to give Kendall a chance to say goodbye? Would I have had a chance to talk her out of it? Not if she'd taken the money, no. So leaving me in the dust was Kendall's end of the deal. You would have gotten over it, Anton. If you stay with her, your whole life is destroyed. Better for me to end up like you, right? No, thanks. I don't call this a life. Fine, Anton. Ha have it your way. Kiss your future goodbye for a cold-blooded user that doesn't care about you at all. Kendall loves me. Like hell she does! She proved it today. You couldn't pay her enough to stay away from me. We're gonna be together forever. I am gonna marry Kendall. I had no husband, I had no money, I was very young. I couldn't bring up a child. So you gave him up for adoption? How? Uh, would you use a family? Did you go through an orphanage? Yes, an orphanage. Okay, where? Which one? A state institution. Well, here in Budapest? What was the name? It doesn't exist anymore. Well, there must be some kind of records where the children were... No, no <laughs> records. No, they were destroyed. The building was burned to the ground. With the children? No, the, the children were transferred by the time of the fire. Okay, transferred where? Uh, they were divided up. Some here, some there. Many different cities, countries, we'll never know. Oh, yes, we will. The files were destroyed. Well, somebody's got to know something. It wasn't that long ago. A baby nurse, a cook, a, a secretary. These people get attached to a little baby. Somebody must remember yours. I'm, please, just remember the details. Anything. The staff, the director, the address. Anything you can think of. Now, what was the name of the place? I'm telling you, you will never find the boy. I've tried. It's impossible. With money, all things are possible. My brother is a rich man. The name Andrasi means something in this country. Don't build your brother's hopes. His heart will be broken. My brother's child is somewhere around here. I'm not leaving Hungary until I track him down. You can't stay here. I mean, you've just been married. Go back and go on with your life. I will call the hospital and ask for a leave of absence. You do that? For family, do you have to ask? But it's hopeless. This man does not know the meaning of that word. You know what he does for a living, don't you? I mean, he's exposed under, underworld crime syndicates and, and exposed secret arms deals. I mean, 
compared to that, looking for one missing child. But I have like... all the time in the world, Corvina. I will find him. Trust me. Okay. You go and hit the archives. I'll do whatever legwork you need. Okay, to be done. listen, I think we should drive into town right now. Stop, okay. please, I beg you. Don't go any farther. Leave the boy alone. He's happy. The orphanage didn't burn down, did it? You know where Dimitri's son is, don't you? Did they break for lunch today, or did they order in? Did they ask for any more transcripts? Yeah, uh, thanks, Mike. Thanks a lot. Keep me posted. Bye-bye. What are you doing here? I thought you were in... Traction. Traction didn't agree with my new shoes. Libby, I thought you were supposed to be laid up for at least another two weeks. Funny thing, so did the doctors. Look, Jack, I could lie around in a hospital bed or I could come in here and wait for the jury to come in, but I couldn't do both. What did Mike say? Well, Mike seems to feel it could go either way still. He says the jury has asked for the legal definition of temporary insanity three times. Hard to sell. Well, you did a hell of a good job, Sam. Yeah, we'll see. You did. You did a very, very good job, Arthur. I mean, you made it almost easy for me to sit back and watch. I said almost easy. Look, I didn't explode or anything. I didn't chew my nails up to my elbow. Oh, well, a toast to your self-control. How is Erica? I think Erica can take whatever comes her way, but I think she's really worried about Bianca. I mean, how many hard knocks does one kid have to take? Kids. They take it, they take it, they take it. And then by some miracle, they reach down and pull out more trust. You know, how many times can you break that trust? You break it for the hundredth time, and somehow they still find some more, but you can't even be there for them. Are we talking about Bianca here? <laughs> Yes. Absolutely yes. All right. This is it. No matter where I am, I will always be your mommy. And I defy any jury to ever change that. When I wake up in the morning, do you know you're the first thing on my mind? Before I go to bed at night, I never go to sleep without saying goodnight to you. And when I'm sad, all I have to do is think of you. That's all I have to do, honey. I cheer right up. I can make myself smile by just thinking of your face. You're my heart. You're my heart, Bianca. And nobody can ever take away my heart. And I dare them to try. Prisons are dangerous. Everybody says so. Oh, my sweetheart. Your mommy can take care of herself. You're not scared? I'm scared. But that's okay to be scared. Because it doesn't mean that I'm just going to...